um, chapter two, um, if we and, and this is part of week one where we give you an overview of um, of what the, um, the, the module is um, is about. Um, as I said during the early session this morning, um, basically the introduction is followed by chapter two, where we look at um, the customer, because the customer is the important um, element. Without a customer, who do we sell to? <laughs> so sales have no have no meaning if there's no customers to sell to. Um, and then from um, uh, in the next chapter, chapter three, we look at something that's extremely important, um, and that is the, our skills of communication how do we communicate when do we listen when do we speak uh, and we're talking about verbal nonverbal, and written um, communication because they're all forms of communication and um, different um, forms of communication need to be used in different sales situations um, and then from chapter four onwards chapter by chapter we'll be dealing with the 10 steps um, we basically um, devote a chapter per step in the selling cycle. Okay, um, prospecting and negotiating and dealing with object, uh, um, objections and stuff like that. But before we get to that, um, and welcome for everybody that has joined. Um, I see that uh, Luandu has also now joined us. Um, welcome, Luandu and um, Theresa, and we have full group of four at the moment, which is. Um, I think good enough for a Friday, but anyway, the luxury is there of the session being recorded um, and people can watch it whatever time suits them best. Chapter two, as I have already briefly um, indicated, is about um, the customer. Um, the customer, you can remember from, to hopefully remember from my first session on, on Wednesday, the customer is king. The customer is what everything is about. We want to, to as accurately as possible determine what the customer's needs are, what problems they have that we can maybe assist in solving by offering a particular product um, or service that um, that they can buy from us. Um, and therefore, it's important to try and understand how the customer operates, how they, um, the process that they go through um, when they have to make a decision um, we briefly touched on it in business marketing in um, in the first semester, um, and it's very much still um, in in some um, instances in this chapter um, a, a not a repeat but a sort of a, a um, revisit um, to certain um, elements um, that um, that we have done in marketing already, specifically um, Maslow's hierarchy of of needs, um, which um, um, gives us an indication of what motivates customers to make certain decisions. And then obviously we'll be looking at all the different factors that can influence um, the customer's buying decision. Family, the social class, um, where they live geographically, the, what work they do, um, where in what phase of their life cycle they find themselves. These are all factors that impact and influence the decisions that customers take and we'll um, have a look at um, we'll have a look at, at at that in this chapter as well as then um, why buying is a choice decision okay because you still I mean and, and that's one thing that sells people and remember although you're a customer yourself um, for this module we're putting on the salesman's cap uh, or the salesperson's cap um, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the salesperson you're trying to sell a product. Um, and if you um, understand, the, or one way of understanding the customer better is to understand yourself, because you are primarily a customer or a consumer before you um, are a salesperson or a doctor or a lawyer. Or, so use that to your advantage. And when you're selling, what would you have done if you were in the shoes of the customer? And if you remember that, you will always put the interest of the customer first and therefore you will offer them a product that they need uh, and not necessarily a product that um, that um, has no value to them. So you've got to, in your selling process, be able to indicate to them how this um, product can benefit them 
um, and it's all done. Um, it's all done um, through a specific process. Because customers nowadays get so much information, um, you as a salesperson um, have to ensure that you build a relationship of trust with your potential um, customers. Um, let's call them prospects at this stage. Um, and by building that relationship of trust, they will later on um, um, value the information that you offer them. So um, it is a specific process that we go through. And I think one of the important or another important characteristic for or trait that a salesperson should have is that of patience. Um, not to over, try and oversell, um, otherwise provide too much information, be too pushy, um, but let's um, give small bits of relevant information um, regularly. Um, in other words, follow a specific process that will lead to um, the need satisfaction of um, the customer. Right. Before we um, look at the process itself that needs to be followed, let's um, um, identify three very important elements that will form part of, um, of that process. And that is the product that you are selling um, have certain features, it have certain benefits and advantages. And we need to um, um, understand and differentiate between these three. Let's look, for instance, at, at, at buying a car. If you're buying a car, the feature is the physical characteristics of that vehicle, the brakes, um, the steering wheel, the sound system, the onboard computer system. Um, the advantage is that because the vehicle has ABS brakes, it can stop very quickly and safely. The benefit for the customer directly linked to that feature is the fact that you are safer. You can keep the people that drive with you and yourself um, as the driver and keep safe because there is a reliable um, um, braking system in, in the vehicle. So you've got to, in every situation, sell the benefit that the customer will get. Uh, welcome, Stanley. Um, sell the benefit that the customer will get from the product that you are selling. Um, you will list the features, but the features the customer can also Google. The customer can find that information elsewhere in a brochure or a booklet or um, it doesn't always indicate how the customer will benefit from that particular feature. And that's very important for you in the sales process to try and emphasize um, specifically the benefit that the customer will get um, from the specific features that that product has. Because that immediately um, indicates um, where the value of this product lies. Otherwise, oh, it sounds very nice. I know way into work this morning, I uh, um, heard on the radio again, the breakfast show on, on KFM, um, there's a, they're running a competition where you can win the new Galaxy, um, the ga Galaxy Fold, and I think the Galaxy Flip. Um, the one is twenty-one thousand rand, and the and, and the Galaxy Fold is um, is is a Samsung Galaxy Fold is thirty-seven thousand rand. Now, people really, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for me um, to to to. Um, that phone probably has a lot of features, but at the end of the day, for, uh, if, if you're a salesperson trying to sell that new Galaxy Fold um, to me, um, you know what? The benefits that I will get from that is not necessarily going to satisfy my needs because my need of a phone is with the features I would love in the phone because they will provide me the benefits of what I want from a transaction or from a phone would be um, battery life, would be, um, um, for instance, um, sound quality. Those are important things to me. As many of those features, I think at the end of the day, that they use in promotions to impress the customer. But you know what? 
if it comes down to um, what the real advantage and benefit of that particular feature uh, features are to the customer, um, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I can't justify a that um, that amount um, for a phone, um, especially. But then there are people who use their phone for everything. They do not have a, tab uh, a tablet. They do not have laptop because they do everything from their phone. Then obviously they need a sort of a, um, um, a computer that they can um, hold in the palm of their hands, um, but they can basically have access to all the platforms as necessary. So again, um, you've got to and uh, you've you've got to understand, and that's in chapter three where we deal with the sales knowledge. You you have to understand and have knowledge about all the features that the particular product has, but more importantly, you need to be aware of the benefit that it might. Um, um, offer the customer. If we look at um, at the next slide, for instance, um, um, and that's what I said earlier, you have to you have to follow a specific process when you're trying to to sell um, um, a product or a service to a um, to a, a pros um, potential customer or to a prospect. You will have to inform them about the features. Um, you will name the advantages that they will get. And then obviously what benefits they will have from that particular product. Um, and and I think it's 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 very important that we have to remember that um, there's no one um, one size fits all kind of um, generic um, um, solution to um, to a specific customer's problem. You have to adapt for every situation. Um, what's going, what one customer, what's a benefit to one customer is not necessarily a benefit to another, and that's why we have to be very flexible in our approach um, when we um, sell a product to a customer, um, because the signals um, that the customer is ready to make a decision and buy the product uh, is going to be different. Um, and as we progress through this chapter, um, we'll identify. A few more factors that can influence the buying decision, um, um, and then you realise it's not that easy to accurately identify exactly what the customer needs. Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs you, you are familiar with. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Again, like we did in business marketing, please people, there's a specific order in which these um, um, needs are satisfied. We work from the bottom up, so our physiological needs are satisfied first, followed by our safety, our belonging, our esteem and our self-actualization needs. These are all um, potential reasons why people are motivated to make a specific decision. One at the bottom, obviously, we need it for survival, we need food, we need water, and um, therefore, it's an important decision to take um, for us just to stay alive. Um, and therefore, our involvement as customers in that decision making process is going to be um, very, um, very evident. Um, it's your specific need. It's your specific problem. It's you that are hungry or thirsty and you will make a decision on, on what is best to, to satisfy that need. Um, but obviously, the more, um, the greater the emergency of the need um, to be satisfied, um, the, um, the more desperate, in other words, the customer is almost to satisfy that need, um, the easier it would be to reach a decision. Um, and they are not really going to, if, if, if somebody hasn't eaten for three days and you put three different brands of, um, of bread in front of them, they don't really care. They're hungry. They'll take any bread. Um, and and um, obviously it's going to be, it's going to be slightly different once we move up the, the rank of, of, um, of the hierarchy. Um, when you're buying expensive items like jewelry and televisions and um, cars and stuff like that, um, you'll take more time and collect more information to make a decision because you know in no rush to make a decision because it's an expensive transaction and therefore you will take more time. Um, and you can see that in both these situations, 
the function of and the approach that um, um, that should be taken by a salesperson is going to be more different. You don't have to be very patient for somebody who has a physiological need that needs to be satisfied. If he's hungry or thirsty, um, they need to they need a, a solution to the problem immediately. They need a product now, um, and obviously. Too much information is going to get wasted um, because the customer is not really interested in, in the differentiating features between those different options. However, on the higher level, where it's a more expensive item, um, they'll take time, they'll have um, objections that you have to um, address. Um, they will need more and more information um, before they make a final decision. So your role as a salesperson um, is going to be you're going to be involved in the process much longer because the process to make a decision to reach a decision for the customer is going to be so much longer. Right. The types of needs we've got our, our motives. Um, we've got manifested motives and we've got latent motives. Your manifested motives, um, quite simply, are the ones that we are aware of and um, or the ones that we feel comfortable with or the ones that we know about. And we are all we are willing to admit that that's one of the reasons why I bought this product. Your latent motives, slightly different. We either not aware that that actually um, is one of the reasons um, that motivated us to, to buy a particular product, or maybe we are reluctant to, um, to admit that, you know what, I bought that expensive watch because um, I wanted my image to to um, to, to improve. Um, so it was um, that was one of my you don't, you don't do, um, um, you're probably aware of it. That's your motive that or but that motivated you to buy that particular watch or or vehicle. Um, but sort of shy um, to admit that um, that was actually the real reason why you did it. Um, not because you needed it, because um, um, it's more sort of a, a desire or a want to improve your, your status and your, your image or to enhance it. Right. The example that I have on the screen there is, is from um, buying a, a VW Jetta, for instance. Your latent motives, remember, um, or manifested motives, the ones that we are aware of, the ones that we um, are um, that, that we admit um, motivated us to buy the Jetta is, for instance, um, um, friends who have um, the engine, um, the powerful engine that it has, it, the fact that it's, a, that it's a comfortable vehicle, those are all things that we are aware of and that we admit. I bought that car because, I mean, geez, I mean, who wouldn't buy that car with all that features? Um, your latent motives, um, it's, it's um, more along the line of um, your image and enhancement, um, the fact that um, it will indicate that you're actually financially stable um, or that it's actually going well financially, that's um, um, why you bought it, because it's, it's going to portray that kind of, of, of image. Okay, that's just, again, another example of, um, of um, to explain to you what the difference between manifested and latent motives um, 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 oh. Right. Another aspect that is important for us to remember um, when we look at the different factors that can um, influence our buying behavior is um, a, the, the value of the transaction. The more expensive, as I said um, previously, when we did um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the um, more expensive a product is, um, the more difficult it is to make a final decision because the risk of losing lots is so much greater. You buy a loaf of bread, it's 10, 12, 15 rand. Um, you'll be disappointed if you bought the wrong um, brand, um, but it's not going to be the end of the world. If you are ever buy a 500,000 rand vehicle, and it turns out to be the wrong decision. You're going to be very upset for a very long time. Okay, so the more expensive the, the item is that you purchase, 
um, the longer it will take for a customer to make a decision because it's a more complex decision um, making process um, and many influencing factors uh, um, is going to be um, apparent in a situation like that. You are going to find um, as much information from as the greatest variety of sources possible to help you make that um, decision. If it's a routine item, like I said, with bread and milk and um, toothpaste and stuff like that, um, it's it's a low value item, and therefore the risk, um, financial risk specifically, um, if you make a wrong decision, um, is not that great. Um, and the involvement and the duration of the decision making process is 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 way shorter as well. Now we'll be looking individually at some of the factors right at the bottom of the screen um, that um, influences the behavior of a customer. Um, like I said previously, your social factors, um, family, your demographics, your age, your gender, um, psychographics, your lifestyle, um, your own personality, um, the different traits of your personality. And that's obviously the culture that you um, um, have grown up in. Um, none of these are unfamiliar, excuse me, none of these are unfamiliar to you because um, it should still be sort of fresh in your memory from a first semester um, introduction to business marketing. Am I right in, um, in saying that? Is everybody on the same page at the moment? This is not difficult stuff, it is again sort of revisiting some things that we know already, um, but um, not we're not trying to obviously put it in context um, of, of you um, learning the trade of becoming a good salesperson because that's what this module of personal selling is about. Okay. Any questions at this point, anybody? I'm getting very cold where I'm sitting at the moment. I have to admit the weather has changed. Woo! Definitely snowing somewhere. That that we identified early this morning. So as we were in the first uh, in the first period, um, and Andres off to <laughs> Andres off to Drakensberg to um, show his daughter snow for the first time. She's never seen snow. He's going to get cold this morning, definitely. Anyway, um, no questions. Um, thanks, Teresa. Um, all good. So we can advance and look at. And I would like some input from you as well. And, and as we progress through this, um, let's have instance. Um, let's take an example before we um, browse, browse through these um, uh, six um, um, factors. Um, what would you say? Um, I'm gonna. What should we buy? Give me, give me, uh, give me an, um, a, a, a product that um, that you're interested in buying. Anybody, it doesn't matter. I just want to use this as an example. I don't want to use my own example, so I want you to. Uh, what are we buying? Give us a product to buy. I wonder what are we buying? Right. We're going to buy a 3D printer. Interesting choice. Uh, your motivation for, for suggesting something like that? Um, or we, are you just interested in, did you have to buy one recently? Or is it just because um, you thought, okay, right, uh, let, let's think of anything and see how that, um, how the process unfolds. 3D printer, let's go with 3D printer, that's fine. Now, my qu next question to you is, we're going to buy a 3D printer. Which of those elements um, on, on the screen um, are going to have the greatest influence on, on you making the final decision as to, as to what to buy? Um, I think it will be personal. Or... You're quite right. It would definitely be personal because um, <laughs> Some people would say, why, why not just the ordinary printer, um, um, Brody? Um, and then, yeah, personality, definitely. Um, so what resources would you, would, would you um, your own personality, your, your specific needs, obviously, um, there's a motivation for you to, um, um, to, to possess a 3D printer. 
uh, and not just an ordinary printer. Um, are you buying the 3D printer because it will improve your social um, um, your social status or image? I don't think so. Nobody's really going to say, wow, that guy's got a 3D printer. He must be doing very well. There's a specific reason why people buy a 3D printer. Okay. Um, when we go through the selling process as a salesperson, very important, I think, yeah, would be um, where we started off at the beginning to highlight the specific features that the product offer you, but more importantly, what's the advantage that you will have if you have a 3D printer? What can you do with a 3D printer that you can't do with a normal printer? That's basically part of your sales pitch in a case like this. Okay, from a customer's point of view, it's also important because there's a motive, that was your main reason for, or main motivation for, for buying a 3D printer. Is it going to be an um, a, a easy decision to make? No, I don't think so. It's a complex decision because not every um, Tom, Dick and Harry has a 3D printer. Um, not at the moment. <laughs> it's like, go back to 1975. Um, there were every, every fifth household in South Africa had a television. Uh, now almost everybody has one at least. Um, so, yeah, 3D printers, probably not as common nowadays in, in um, you'll probably have a, businesses um, definitely would, um, would, um, would invest in something like that. Um, but for your home use, domestic use at home, when you want to just print your, your children's um, school tasks and stuff like that, um, you're probably not going to have a 3D printer. At the moment, it might completely change. It might be that in the future, um, um, there's no um, ordinary printers anymore. All printers um, is, um, are 3D printers. It's like um, when the cell phones um, came into use in the mid 90s, um, people still had a use for a telephone. People needed phones, they needed the landline, A, because not everybody had access to, to cell phones, not everybody could afford a cell phone or a contract on them. Um, um, and, and, and things have changed over the last 25 years, significantly. Um, it's, it's one of the obsolete blocks on a form that's, that, that, um, that you complete is home phone number. People, very few people still have home, home phone numbers, landlines for that matter. Um, landlines were required also up to a point because um, another way of communication was when people faxed each other. I mean, seriously, nowadays people still fax? I don't think so. Um, would you fax your proof of payment? No, people, everything is done there. It's electronic limits. How quickly just... And, and take a photograph and snapshot it and send it to you and whatever. And people, things progress. Um, and in this case, a 3D printer is is a is an item that is going to require a lot of research. So we can gather sufficient information and compare the products and the options that's available because it's going to be an expensive transaction. It's not. We don't buy 3D printers every day. Um, and you hope to um, um, you hope for it to actually at least um, work for a year to two years before you even think of upgrading or replacing it. Um, so it is it's going to be a more complex decision. Um, and therefore, from a sales point of view, you as a salesperson will have to be very, very patient with the customer making decision. And they are going to ask a lot of questions. They are going to um, have a few objections um, that you have to would need to address before the final decision is made. Right. Um, I think we all understand the process. Let's look at um, each of these factors individually. How does family impact on the decisions that we take? Well, it depends or most definitely um, the cycle in your life cycle 
whatever phase you are in your life cycle is going to impact um, differently on how you make certain decisions. Um, hopefully none of you have children. Andre is not with us. He's already on his way to the Drakensberg, but he has um, he has a family. Um, I can tell you, your whole your whole behavior pattern changes when you have children. Um, when you only have to buy products for yourself, um, it's totally different to having to buy products for yourself and for family members. Um, the decisions that you take in the different stages um, is going to, um, if you are in a more matured phase of the, your um, life cycle, um, are going to more be important decisions like what school would you um, would you um, would your children go to, for instance, um, the vehicles that you have to buy. If you have to buy a vehicle, and if it's just you, I mean, you're going to go GTI, and I mean, because you need uh, there's a need for speed, and um, um, we have a family, and that's something I learned when my family arrived. Um, one day it was just me and my wife in the Labrador, so we can get away with a little bantam bucky or a, um, the, the um, 200. Um, there's no room for a um, baby seat in a bucky. You can't throw the baby in the back. So you had to buy a family vehicle with four doors at least, or maybe at least two, maybe. Um, Preferably a hatchback because it's easier to convey um, all um, the um, all the equip almost the equipment um, everything that goes with um, um, that you have to tag along when you have when you have small children um, and therefore when you have to make a decision in both those different situations as to what car to buy it's going to be influenced by whatever need you have at that point based on the um, phase of your life cycle. So family definitely impacts on the decisions that we take. Social class, <laughs> social class. If you don't have money, you can't buy things that you um, very often, um, no, not very often, almost always. What you have in your wallet is what you can um, spend and that will determine a great deal in what you buy. And um, and salespeople obviously need to be aware of this. Um, you are not going to go to um, a very poor community um, and s try and sell 3D printers to them because they won't see the need for it. Um, and they will definitely buy 5,000 different other items before they think of buying a 3D printer. So it's not it's not a necessity to them at that stage, based on their social status. Um, and as I said earlier, on um, you're probably not going to buy a 3D printer to enhance your image. Um, it's a, it's a specifically functional item um, that you have a specific need for. But your social class, in other words, um, um, your specific lifestyle and, uh, and values and um, income uh, will definitely influence the decisions that you take. Important to know that as a salesperson, where in what particular social class a potential customer find themselves. Let's look at the demographics. Your age, your gender, if you're single or married, um, what level of education you, um, you have obtained, um, what job you do, these are all factors that influence a great deal how and what decisions we make. Any of you who, how important is, 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 it, is, is your family, um, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, grandfathers, um, how important are they in the decisions that you are currently in the phase that you find yourself as 18, 19, 20 year old students? Um, how important is that? Um, 
How important is that in your um, in your um, decision making? Do you consult regularly with them or only in certain instances? I would say just in certain circumstances, um, because I really don't have a family at this moment. You can, you're not going to ask your mother's advice um, if you're buying deodorant, but um, you're definitely going to ask her advice and opinion if you're buying a car, right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, it depends on on what you purchase. Um, you usually you usually ask for uh, for um, um, for opinions of people that you whose opinions you value. Um, obviously, if the if the if a transaction is a is a more difficult one to make or it's a more expensive uh, decision to take, yes. Quite important because there's an idea um, not to financially burden anyone, but in certain aspects. Yeah, you're quite right. I think at the end of the day, that's one thing that um, um, that is important for, for, for salespeople to always remember, and that is um, you don't you want to walk away from a sales transaction from a sale feeling that you know what I, I feel proud of myself because I sold something to somebody today um, that really will solve the problems that that person has they're really going to need that product they're really, they're really going to use that product and they're going to enjoy it and I think really I I gave them the best advice possible as to what to buy and I think that is um, it's very important for us to to um, as salespeople to remember. Okay, Wandu, I think was typing something as well. Let's just wait and see. Yes, so um, all of these factors that we've mentioned are um, influencing the decisions that we take as consumers. Um, demographic information um, can easily be obtained through um, Statistics South Africa. I believe that we were supposed to, it was scheduled um, for a national census to happen this year, but um, I read somewhere in the week that um, it's actually at least till next, postponed till next year. And I think it's really important because it requires um, a lot of door-to-door -door work, um, which is not ideal in the um, pandemic situation that we find ourselves now globally. Um, right. Our psychographics, our lifestyle. Hmm. What lifestyle we lead, what lifestyle we would like, love to, um, how we live, um, very much determined on what we buy. Am I right? Am I right? I mean, definitely, definitely. I'll have to look in the garage. I don't think I have this, um, the surfboard that I had when I was a young student. Um, I don't think I can surf anymore. Um, Darkwood is probably um, surfing at the moment. No, sorry, I don't think he is, but um, I think I'm aware of the reasons. But um, anyway, yeah, there are, there are some products that we don't use that we still have. Um, and, and sometimes um, we don't get rid of it. Um, we sometimes, um, as we age, we want to remind ourselves of the lifestyle that we had at a certain stage, or you want to keep it for your children um, when they get to that age where they maybe want to maybe surf in this case, um, the example I've used now. Um, also important, our personality. Um, it is very important how we see ourselves, how we want others to see us. Those are all very um, um, important influencing factors um, that definitely play a very important role um, on, on, uh, in, in the decisions that we take. We often buy products um, to, yes, enhance our image um, and to even um, improve our image. Uh, certain branded um, items specifically I can I can think of at the moment 
Um, although it actually doesn't really matter. But remember, we're looking at this from uh, through the glass uh, through the glasses of a salesperson um, in an attempt to understand how the customer can behave or um, might behave. So we know exactly what questions to structure that will um, that will be questions of importance for the potential customer. The stage usually an indication that you have done your homework and that you understand the needs of the particular um, of the particular customer. Right, people, I think we've reached the end of another session. Um, thanks very much. I will upload um, this particular recording um, during the course of the afternoon. Um, we've successfully negotiated the first week. Um, thank you very much. Um, and you must enjoy your weekend, please. Um, stay safe. Um, you guys can get vaccinated from 1st of September, right? So stay safe and make good decisions, like I always say. Um, but also, um, you are young and um, you have to enjoy your life as well. Okay, but uh, do it in a responsible manner. So thank you very much for this uh, for the session. Um, and we will chat again after the weekend. Uh, I just want to finish off by checking my um, timetable and confirming with you that we will have another session. And, and that would be on Monday is our next class. And the Monday one is at 20 past one, if I'm correct. OK, um, I will just send out an announcement and a reminder to everybody um, since um, not the entire class that is on the class list have um, attended. Uh, some haven't even attended any other sessions this week. And I just want to make sure that they have all the correct information. So stay safe, behave yourself, but enjoy yourself as well. And we'll chat again on Monday.